Oh, oh, I didn't see you there. Private comrades. It is me, Galea. We are now on the first stage here in uh, the battle event. That looks... Dude, oh, I can't get over how sick these maps look. <laughs> the amount of Silent Hill. <laughs> Castle looks like Silent Hill. Pretty much. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm getting from all this. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead. Whoops, that was a bit too far. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab Milsies. And you're probably wondering why. Well, I am two stages away from uh, getting her module and I really 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 want that so we're going to use Milsis this time uh, to start off with but uh, I doubt anyone will protest that because uh, Milsis and Dingray are the two of my favorites so Ashkelon's currently climbing up there so anyway let's go Get some more backstory. Eight years ago. Ooh. Okay, we're almost we're almost at uh, current time. Okay. This this is cool. Eight years ago, summer ten eighty six. Residential district, the aromatic city of Castel. Remember the promise we made at the beginning of the lesson? Good. Keep your voice low when answering. And don't tell anyone about the classes. Ray Tanka has been teaching you about our history for the past few months. As for myself, I've been struggling to decide what to teach you in our last lesson. Mathematics, language, agriculture, weapon making. What I've come to realize is that whatever I teach you won't truly change our lives. We've lived silently in despair for too long. The war 18 years ago never ended. The ghosts of the Fandus fleet continue to haunt those who experienced that war. Many died in despair, drowned in the fear of war and of being consumed by the black rocks that grew from their bodies. But our instincts drove us to seek a way to overcome despair. Some declared war on despair on the outsiders who oppressed us, but they all fell short in the face of cruel reality. Oh, he's still alive! Wow! Came to see the contracts. I've never seen a more motivated mercenary than you. Are you trying to buy a mansion in Colombia or something? One should feel lucky just to be alive for so long. In that sense, I suppose your name was well deserved. I heard a bunch of jobs came in lately. Anything good? There are eyes on and in the city now. Things didn't turn out too well for the last few who took these jobs. It's babble stuff. Are you sure you want to be a part of that mess? Yeah, I trust my luck. Have it your way. There, there's a teacher in town who's been saying good things about Babel's outsiders. Someone is willing to pay to shut him up for good. Will do. I look forward to your surprises. Hope your luck doesn't run out today. The nomadic city of Castor. It has been a while since good luck came back. The city has changed a lot. People come and go. He is familiar with the words Babel and military commission. There are always people fighting over things that he does not understand. He does not understand why the sarcasts feel the need to fight one another. Yeah, I, I, I bet that's a pretty terrible feeling. But that's, yeah. That's going to get worse when that civil war is going to break out even, even worse. Oh boy. He takes out the photo of the target. A mild-mannered young man. The triangular marking on his sleeve seems familiar. A teacher spreading praise about Babel's outsiders inciting opposition against the military commission. So your luck just ran out today. Should be around here. Wait, this place? He's been away for a long time, but not long enough to get his home. 
Oh, that's home. Oh, that you should not have gotten involved? Oh, fuck, dude. Hell no. Hell no. You got used to despair from one defeat after another at the hands of powers beyond our ability to resist. But we needed to convince ourselves that our despair was not self-inflicted, that it stemmed from an obvious source in our lives. That is what Babel has become for people in this, in this day and age. It was Babel who brought the enemies. It was Babel's medicine that worsened our oropathy. It was Babel's education that sapped our will to resist. It was Babel who deluded the King of Sarkas and tricked us into giving up on collecting the blood debt from the outsiders. Babel is the source of all of our despair. I see some of you nodding. No doubt you've heard the same from your parents. In desperate times, people often mistake heresy, heresy for the truth. I was about to say heresy. Oh, shit. But is it the truth, though? Were our lives better without outsiders in Castell? Don't take anything at face value. See, think, and find your own answer. Yes, it's hard to leave Castell. The land outside is full of danger. Even making it to the border of the next country is no small feat. But I'll still leave this place. I'll go to the Fania, Colombia, Casimir's, to anywhere that I may find a way to change things. Then I'll come back and teach you and all the children of the Sarkas. What will happen to Babel, you ask? Future of Babel. Oh, he's grown up. Damn. Hmm. Hide yourself. Still make a sound. Hello, are you looking for someone? Sorry, I got the wrong door. Do you need help? I'm familiar with the area. He smiles. There is no panic in his eyes. Escalon scans the sparsely furnished rooms, room and understands. Oh, who is this? She's a banshee though. Oh, dude, the banshees uh, have some amazing designs. Anyway. Hmm. Do you live here on your own? Yes. My name is Escalon. I'm from Babel. Huh? Thank you for shuttering him, but you must leave. Be careful. These are troubled times. Hmm. You heard her. Someone knows you're here. You need to go. Not just the military commission, but also those mercenaries who've been bringing trouble to our doorstep. I know. I'm very grateful to you for lending us your house to serve as classroom. The children. I'll take them home. Don't worry, you can continue your classes in a few days once the storm has passed. There will be no need. As I've said before, I'm ready to leave. I've already spent too much time here because I wanted to see the lessons through to the end. There are many places that I still need to see. Alright, oh, don't forget the potatoes. They are from the children and me. It's not much. But it'll serve as a few meals on the road. Thank you so much, all of you. I should be the one thanking you. I learned a lot from you. For the past few years, Castell has grown faster than its education and public thinking can keep up. I fear that our powers will be our own destruction if we do not change the present situation. The conflicts we see in Castell now are a good example. This is not how the sarcasm should be. I have yet to find a way to change all these. But I know that the answer does not lie within Castell. Goodbye, Otter. Goodbye. May your journey be safe and smooth. Hmm. Otter watches as the teacher disappears around the corner but does not go in. He does not remember when it started, but he has a habit of sitting by the door waiting for a familiar someone to return. Wind stirs the dust from the streets and the dust stirs up his tears. There is not even a shadow. He gently closes the door. Otter. Good luck. Sees the tiger leave the house. Then he sees a familiar figure that he has not seen for a long time. His blade feels heavy. He cannot move. 
Oh no, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I'm a lousy dad, but tightens his grip on the knife silk. He knows only one way to give Otter a better future. Another one. I miss Rouse a corpse in the corner of the street, erasing all traces of its existence. The passing of a life in Castle is akin to a speck of dust falling to the ground unheard, unceremonious, and unnoticed. His luck has run out. How long do you plan on hiding there, Manfred? Or are you planning to stab me in the back now? Another mercenary? How many have you killed? Didn't see the point to keep count. You could kill one, two, a hundred even, but you can but can you kill every single mercenary who accepts the contract? They just want to remind us that we've been complacent with the status quo for far too long. Using the lives of Babel members as a reminder? To remind whom? Hmm. He made a promise to our highness. Is this what he calls protection for Babel? All I see are crackdowns from Babel and mercenaries running wild. There are some things that should not have been said aloud. Especially not by you, Ascalon. If you don't like it, arrest me. Let's see if you've improved at all under his tutelage. The general has taught me that there are more things, more important things than violence. And by the looks of things, the mercenaries aren't the only ruthless cutthroats around here. Stop darting if you dare. I'll prove to their highnesses that I can beat you. Too slow, Manfred. Wait. Ah. You're dead. Again. Ugh. Get up. Don't need you to tell me. Footwork, Manfred and Escalon. Stop going for his head all the time. This is the most effective way. It's his own fault for getting hit. If he can't dodge it, he has to learn to take it. <sighs> You're right, Escalon, but why did you stop? We didn't tell you to. I, I can take it, Your Highness. It's not over yet. Hmm. <laughs> huh? I hit. Your Highness, I hit. Did you now? Let me down, Escalon. Don't hurt him, Ascalon. <laughs> okay, that's fucking funny. Manfred's long limbs flail helplessly in the air while his torso is tied to a wooden stake. Uh, how did he do it so fast? Got my inspiration from the way her highness sues. Manfred wriggles to break free, but the more he squirms, the tighter the ropes. Hug him. He can't understand how Escalon can be so strong and fast when she looks as thin as frail as him. Let me down. Look, I won again. Escalon raises a weapon high and grins victoriously at the twin sovereigns. Escalon has gotten a lot more cheerful. Hmm. What are you thinking? They're different from the other sarcast children. We can change them, but how can we reach... All the children of Castel. Give me time. Babel can do it. Time is a luxury. I know. But education in us is not something that can be rushed. What we are doing is leaving hope for the next generation. The flame of hope will never go out. As long as a single teacher in Castel remains willing to share. With these children the vision of a beautiful future. Teresa casts her eyes towards the two children, full of hope for the future. Well, are you going to admit defeat or not? N no, let me down. We're not done. I'll let you down when you admit defeat. No way. I'll unbind you, Manfred. Thank you, Your Highness. Wh whoa, why am I flying? You Your Highness. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that will do, Teresa. Let him down.
you've improved, but Teresa's hasn't taught you everything he knows. You were always the faster learner, but ever since you left the general, you've been nothing but unadjusted and lost. He is disappointed in your departure, by the way. I may not be as good with words as you are, but at least I don't just ignore the insults against Her Highness Teresa. Do you really know why Her Highness is so dedicated to Babel's ideals? Do you really know why the general hasn't openly denounced the attacks on Babel? You should have talked to him, rather than turning your back on him. I turned my back. You are the ones who turned your backs on Her Highness and the voices of so many. Oh, okay, so the Civil Voices is actually already starting here. Okay. I was thinking, but I, I wasn't sure, so I wasn't going to say anything. But yeah, now, now they're, they're, yeah, they definitely are uh, having a Civil War now. It's Therese who turned a blind eye to the mercenaries act of violence and damage they caused Babel. This much I know. The general has allowed it precisely because he can't ignore the voices of the majority. If the fate of the sarcast is doomed to fall into the abyss, what's wrong with using more effective means to prevent it? So that's what you truly think. It's what most of us in Castle think. It's not that I don't trust Her Highness. Anyone can promise a better future, but we can't ignore the reality before it. Isn't it cruel to use violence to force a child to shake hands and make peace with the murderer who just killed his father? Say whatever you want. I'll keep my hands off the military commission, but if you try to act through the mercenaries, then my job is simple. No more mercenaries, no more problems. Ascalon, if you have the time, go visit her highness. I've never seen her so tired. Papa Mist is the only sign that she was ever there. Manfred looks down and wipes away the blood slowly seeping out of his chest. He sighs and turns into the turns into the empty street only to spot the deceased mercenaries' effects. Someday we will all understand. It was never her highness or the general who made the choice. Who's there? Hesitates before the door. It has been a busy day at this old ramshackle ramshack house. From the teacher to the multiple visitors. Who could it be outside the door? Has father finally returned? And if so, what should he say? Has he learned so much from the teacher that he wants to share with his father? Whose visits back home has become less and less frequent? He takes a deep breath, collects his mind, puts on a calm face and opens the door. Hello? Good evening. You are... Can I help you, sir? You know who I am? Hmm. No, sir, but I know the uniform of the military commission. Just a routine inspection. Do you recognize these items? This is my father's. Have there been some disturbances in the city? Uh, there have been some disturbances in the city, and I'm afraid your father... I'm so sorry. Where, where did you find them? Was there... There was nothing else left at the scene, I'm sorry. Hmm. What's your name? Oda? If you need any help. No, no, I'm very grateful that you brought these back. It's been a long time since I last saw him. This is enough. I don't have to wait anymore. He's not coming back. Do you have family or friends you can count on? I can take care of myself. Besides, we see things like this every day in this city, no? Hmm. I'm sorry, I guess, sir. I just feel like I know you somehow. Well, you kind of do. <laughs> if I'm sure you're busy, I won't keep you any longer. My condolences. The door closes. Manfred can hear the sound of sobbing coming from behind the door, but he doesn't feel sorrow. Not anymore. Oh, that's right. He's seen this too many times, yet he remembers that this is not what the city was meant to be. Damn. Silent crack. Here we go. I <sighs> suppose we can... Actually... Put this thing here. I hope. Yes! <laughs> I like when I make the right choice to place... Uh, okay, who has... Yeah. 
easy. Anyway, I like when I take uh, the right choice on where to put the first person <laughs> so we can defend. Would it make mo make most sense here? I suppose. Eh, why not? Oh shit. Are moving fast. Okay. Let's take after being blocked this area. Oh, so it's oh fuck. All right. So now we have arts lancers. Okay. Fuck me, dude. All right. That's annoying. Bitch. <laughs> Escalon is amazing for this. I love it. <laughs> Let's get some stuns going because why not? Now I'm really happy I put uh, I put Escalon here. <laughs> Where are you going, bruh? Where are you going, bruh? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Kablamo! <laughs> oh my goodness, dude. We are wrecking this stage right now. Uh, let's see. This is fun. You're not even gonna get a chance. Yeah, just kill them. Kablamo. <laughs> Alright. Let's get this going. Nice try, idiot. <laughs> Where are you going, bruh? Where are you going, bruh? <laughs> God damn, I killed them all without even <laughs> having any defense on, the, on that left lane. That's funny. Oh boy, okay. Hermetic City of Castell. Let me through. This area is off limits. What happened? Are you with Babel? N no. Then it's none of your business. The one of well called soldiers prevent Oda, Oda from passing. But he sees several familiar crying faces in the scattering crowd. Those students? Hmm. I think I can take this alley here. Also, Rip, uh, good luck. He was he was a good dude. By the way, I, I didn't see that, but yeah. Excuse me. Do you know what happened? Someone beat another guy to death. He's dead too. 
Are you trying to join the racket? Babble again. What is her highness thinking? Shut your trap. You owe everything you eat, everything you wear, and the roof over your head to our highness. Shh. Hmm. Well, it's simple enough, alright. A teacher beat the father of his student to death. Damn. A teacher, how could... All the man did was scold him a little, and it was the teacher who was telling the kids all sorts of awful, awful things. That's not true. You have Babel Shield too? Kids these days. Hmm. Hey, what are you do- <coughs> Oh shit, oh my god. Hey, what are you doing? Arda squeezes through the crowd and sees some familiar faces lying on the ground. He finally finds the source of the commotion, the teacher lying in a cloud of dust. Teacher, what's going on? I, I didn't mean to hurt his father. Hang in there, I'll find a doctor. No. Over there, him. I looks in the direction that the dying man is pointing and sees an injured child crying by the lifeless body of his father. Oh. Ada runs through the burning streets carrying the injured child in his arms and pieces together the whole picture for what he sees and hears. It began with an agitated, 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 holy fuck, teacher killed, accidentally killed an agitated father before he was set upon by an angry crowd and fell in the dust of the streets. The turmoil dragged everyone in, civilians, battle, mercenaries, in the, even the military commission, wow. Like a chain reaction, clouds of dust were stirred up in various corners of the city. It wasn't until artillery from an unknown source blasted through a wall of Babel's office building and that the Royal Court troops finally quelled the riot. It began with an accident and ended with a shell that caused more damage to Babel than anything in the past 18 years since the end of the war. Okay, so obviously... Teresa and Teresa had a falling out, right? But they're not gonna show that here because I'm I'm assuming they show that in the main story, right? But I thought they were always together, you know. So what the hell happened? I'm so dude. I need to I need to continue reading through uh, episode ten and onward because this is this is so interesting. Anyway, the kid is hurt and needs a doctor. Don't make me do this the hard way. Usari on Babel, the military commission. Neither, I just need to get him to a doctor. Now get out of my way. My dad. It's too late for him. I'm sorry. Mm. Go, but don't trust outsiders so easily, Sarkas. Not in this chaos. Thank you. I can feel the child's breathing grow weaker as he continues on his way. Running through the streets, he seems to feel someone brush past his shoulder but sees no one. The Benji. Was I imagining things? Stop right there, not one step closer. There are patients inside. This kid needs medical attention now. But uh, I didn't think there was anyone still willing to bring patients here. All right, I'll take it from here. I'll try to give you some extra medicine before we leave. Leave? Her Highness has made the decision, but we all know what's happening. We're not welcome in Castell anymore. Where are you going? Outside the city? Aren't you afraid of the dangers in the ways? Yes, I am. But if this city no longer welcomes us, then we respect its choice. Hmm. I want to join Babel. I can help care for the patients or protect you. Damn, ambitious. Alright. Is this the one who stayed, started the whole mess? Will he live? Don't think so. Lost too much blood. Then what are we even doing here? Just follow the general's orders and don't ask questions. Who would have thought something so minor would need their highness's statement? Ugh. Is he trying to talk to us? There's nobody else around. Probably just seeing things before he dies. No banshee would sing an elegy for such a sinner. It's dangerous. Go. <gasps> Dude, I just fucking realized who that is. Is that my boy Logos though? It's a male banshee. 
It has to be logos. Oh my fucking god. I just realized that. <laughs> I was like, dude, no way. Oh, dude, it has to be logos. That's so sick. He's very young here. Yo, dude, that's fucking cool as shit, bruh. It's, it looks like someone he's something he would wear, yeah. They can't see me. My arts hide my presence. Who are you? A student. I came from far away following in the footsteps of my mother. Yup. To find answers in this wandering city and her two rulers. It's definitely Logos. Dude, that's so sick. So we get both uh, Ascalon Law and we get uh, Logos Law. Let's fucking go, man. That's so sick. Did you find... I'm afraid the city doesn't have the answers ready yet. But I found you. The ideas that you advocated were very interesting. I was with you when you taught those children in that basement, learning about the city and Babel. Of course, no one noticed, except Ascalon. The boy has been brought to Babel where his injuries will be treated. Do you regret your end? No. The boy defended me. He understood what I tried to change. I'm sorry about his father. I sympathize. It was not your intention to cause this tragedy, but fate has played a cruel joke on you. I hear crying. It is your elegy, calling your fading soul to the other side. Fear not, hesitate not. The myriad souls welcome you with open arms. Let my song take you beyond. Oh yeah, he's, he's a banshee. He can sing his elegy. Yeah, 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 true. Thank you. The young Banshee's song soothes the mind of the dying man. The gentle song echoes through the crowded streets of the city. Banshees respond to the song of their young kin, adding their voices to the harmony. It is an elegy that commemorates the passing of an ordinary sarcasm. You were talking about the future of Babel in the lesson, but you didn't get to the end. What were you going to say? I believe that Babel will die someday. I hope I'm wrong. Damn, dude. Here's the soul furnace. Oh. A song, another sarcasm has passed on, has passed on in the turmoil. There is no longer any place for Babel here. I will lead them. I will lead them and leave this city. Teresa, we love you. All of us. I know. But Babel has no choice. But if you leave, my people have made their choice. Neither I nor Teresa can change it. We cannot abandon hope. But the best course of action right now is to avoid conflict. Hatred will swallow us like a flood. You always, you've always known Teresa, our hero, our king. Gentle requests and gradual changes will not sway the minds of the sarcasm drawn here by Castell's wise. Meline, I... Perhaps what I say will disappoint, even hurt you, Teresa. Rimbilliton, Sargon, even Columbia. You have opened their doors and allowed the sarcasm to negotiate with some as equals. Terra has seen more technological progress in 50 years than it has for millennia. Hmm. But we were too slow. Despite the incredible changes you brought to Castell, they haven't been enough to bear the fruits of true transformation. Even if I, too, believe that the fruits of spring are near. Is this the stance of the Banshee Court, Malene? I'm just a mother who came to see her boy off, Teresa. I respect his choice, and there will come a day when he will speak for our royal court. But that day is not today. I know you love him. You haven't allowed yourself to age since he was born. Okay, that's alright, dude. If the Banshees weren't cool enough already... <laughs> All right, if if you've if you've gone gone this far, tell me your favorite sarcasm race. I would love to know because there are a lot of cool races. Mine is either Wendigos, vampires, or banshees. I can't I can't pick, but those are basically the top three: Wendigos, vampires, and uh, banshees. Anyway, fuck. Uh, a fennel was made a miracle to me and to all banshees. The day he was born. I became loath to age with time. 
I have preserved my appearance at the peak of my beauty. I wish to remain eternal in his memory. Oh, so that is real. That is his real name. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Ah, oh, no. A, f a fennel. Sounds like a chemical, actually. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Okay. My life is finite, of course. It's only the facade that never changes. I know what your highness is thinking. You never expected your dream to come true in this generation. You see yourself as the soil, and it's not the soil's due to witness the flowers bloom. Even if the two of you have have to give everything to nourish the soil. Hm. Humor my little self indulges, your highness. Until he finds the answer he is seeking, allow him to travel between the two of you, to learn from both of you. He will be the first sprout to emerge from the soil. Bring a fennel. Take care of him. Protect him in my place. I will, Malin, my friend. Thank you. No matter where you go, no matter what fate awaits either of you, the banshee court will sing both of your energies and announce to all, this is my promise, this is the most ancient and powerful of witchcrafts, my final parting gift to you. Malin, will we meet again? I hope so. Until next time then, I look forward to the day that I can hear you sing in the midst of the Convalis. Farewell, your highness. I'm afraid I must stay here and go no further. A fennel will be part of your possession after all, and I'm not ready to say goodbye to him yet. Damn. Damn, okay. So is she going to Rhode Island with Kelset or something? What? what? I'm just guessing here, dude. <laughs> I'm just riffing. <laughs> anyway, two days later. How long do you plan on standing there? You came a little too early, if it's Teresa you're looking for. Hm. I didn't think you would have the courage to come to me, Ascalon. Why? Do you mean why you wouldn't you have the courage to see me, or why I banished Babel? Hmm. You've seen Manfred? Yes. Did you do it? No, all the way. Good. Now remove yourself before you say something childish and naive. Not even Teresa would agree with you. Or you could choose to stay. You don't have to explain yourself. After all, you never formally joined Babel. Her Highness needs someone to protect her. She is more powerful than you think. And I agree with you even less, Master. I suppose I should take that as a no. Hm. You and Manfred are my best students, yet both of you have your fatal flaws. Your talents in combat are peerless, but what do you truly believe in? Your Highness, impatience. I said what you truly believe in, not me or Teresa. Hmm. You still don't know what you seek, do you? To protect, that's just empty self-deceptive sentimentality. Damn, that was a <laughs> that was a sentence. When you're unsure of your past, you merely project your motivations into vague ideals. I thought about it carefully. Perhaps. Then follow Teresa and protect her, but don't blindly adopt her ways. Think for yourself. Manfred find his answer long before you did. The next time we see each other... Never mind. Go, Ascalon. There is nothing else for us to talk about now. Ascalon falls to one knee, then turns to a mist that closes around Teresa's. The mist trembles and disperses, leaving behind only a stone knife in Teresa's hand. He recalls the day that he snatched the blade from the child in the catastrophe. You were too cold to her, Teresa. It's a time of parting. You could have shared your mind with her. She has never been adept at expressing emotion. As her teacher, you were better than me at reaching the teenage side, teenager side of her. Do you really have no faith in her choice? She is welcome back at any time. Manfred remains too complacent in his training. He needs someone to challenge him, a goal to work towards. I'll tell her. I wish you would come back too. I know. If we can't resolve a minor conflict like this, the next one could escalate into a fully fledged civil war. Okay, so it's okay. So it's so this civil war is basically right now in its uh, infant stage, right? But they they don't see eye to eye, basically. So it's it's still brewing. Damn, bro. If it comes to that, all we have dreamed of for a century will be for naught. 
If that day comes and I have to, I'll kill you. Hmm. That was ready. We will leave with those who are willing to follow. You've always kept them close. Yes, because they need me. I need you too. Castell needs its king. Teresa's. Our people have made their choice. The best course of action for now, at least, is for Babel to back down. I will continue to call the nourishing rain upon Castell, change the city's circumstances, and wait for hatred to subside. But, if you become the greatest threat to the searching dreamers in this long and painstaking process, I will destroy you. So be it. Mercenaries and more called soldiers lying in the streets, holding back the restless crowd. It was the King of Sarkas who brought food and shelter. It was also the King of Sarkas who allowed oppression and hatred to fester. The Babel procession stretches as far as the eye can see, past the barricades formed by the lines of royal called soldiers, past the disdainful crowd. Teresus walks towards the crowd and stands with them. He has left Teresa's side for the first time in two centuries. We all know what we must face. I hope this will not be the last time we stand together. Will that day be far? Not too far. Teresa joins the silent procession. Their farewell to the city is so soundless. Their path is one of hope. Then something occurs enough to silence the rest of onlookers and momentarily halt the procession. The cursing and crying cease. Every single line turns to a single, poignant scene. The fuck? A mercenary steps out of the line to embrace his best friend in the procession. Aww. No one can hear the whispers exchanged between the two friends by the ruins of Babel, but all are willing to wait and give them their moment of farewell. So a military commission and Babel member... Oh, it's like Romeo and Julia. Oh, dude. Ah, this sucks, man. Welcome to Arknights, I guess. <laughs> but yo, a farewell between the people and their city and between two peoples of the same blood. A young Sarkas who has lost everyone he holds dear walks in the procession without regret. He remembers walking the same path, living the city in search of his parents with his old, older companion many years ago. Dad, I believe that there has to be another way than war. Mom, I know you believed in Babel because you hoped for a different way to live. Goodbye, Mom. Dad. Goodbye, home. For Teresa's, for ter for Teresa's eyes only. I have heard of what happened in Castle and share your sense of loss. The city holds special meaning to all us all. But Babel need not drift on the wastelands, for I have located the ship I previously mentioned in Rim Billiton. Here we go. That's, there's Cal said. I knew it. I knew it. Now she gets to join uh, Rhodes Island. The excavation went smoothly, and the ship's basic functions have been restored after two years of work. It will carry the hopes of Babel into the future. Please wait, please wait for me, Teresa. P.S. I did find it on the ship. A legacy that could bring upheaval to this land. Given its importance... <gasps> I feel it's crucial to discuss this matter with you in person. With hope. Cal said. So much hype, dude. This, oh my god, this is so fucking good. Fuck, dude. It's really interesting to see uh, events and, uh, and uh, yeah, story before the uh, Chernobyl incident. It's so cool, dude. I love this. All right. Anyway, uh, all right, we got some story. I'll do that next time because this video is already getting pretty long. So thank you for watching, comrades. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, do leave a like. And uh, as always, if you have any thoughts you want to share, do leave them down in the comments. Always cool to read. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a good one, comrades. I will see you tomorrow in the next video. As always, have a good one, comrades, as I said. That's it, Daniel.